Hi, I'm Ben and today I'll be showing you some simple techniques you can use to shoot still life in the studio and later on I'll be showing you how we can recreate these images using non-professional equipment. This is Katie who will be assisting me with the lighting equipment. I'm using my digital SLR camera with the zoom lens that came with it. It's important to make sure everything is ready. I'm just checking I put the card in. I charged the battery last night so that should be fine. I always use a checklist to prepare for a shoot in case I forget anything. I'm using a tripod to keep the camera steady so I don't get any camera shake as that would ruin my shots. Just need to make sure it's on properly and nice and secure. I'm doing a shoot of this still life using a continuous backdrop to avoid a line. Glass things are quite tricky, so I might need to try some different lighting setups. It's really important that all the ideas for your project are your own, so I have to give really clear instructions to Katie. Right, I think I'm ready to get started. Katie, could you put the light to the left of the still life? Just about there. Thank you. I'll do a test shot just to see how it looks. I want to zoom in to get the frame that I want and make sure that it's focused properly. I'm not too happy with that, there's quite a bit of shadow and the composition's a bit boring. I'll try a reflector to help with the shadows. Could you hold it over there to bounce some light onto that side? That's a bit better, but I'm still getting a lot of shadows. Softer light should help. There are many ways to diffuse light. You can either shine through a white umbrella or a diffuser, or in this case I'm using a softbox which is a special cover which softens light. Sometimes when working with a tripod, you can forget that you can still change the camera angle. Katie, would you mind bringing the light closer in and lowering it down for me? That's great, thank you. I'm going to experiment with that and I can also zoom in to crop the composition a bit more. Perfect. If you don't want a line in the background, you can make a continuous backdrop with some wallpaper or you can use a big sheet of paper or fabric. If you don't have a tripod, you can use a pile of books to set the camera at the right height, or you can angle the camera on something soft like a scarf or a beanbag. If you set the self-timer, this will avoid accidentally moving the camera when you press the shutter. You can use ordinary lamps, but you need to be careful with health and safety, especially if it's a type of light that gives off heat. LED lights are good because they're cool to touch and portable. You can make a reflector out of something white, such as a white towel or a piece of white card like this. There's one type of light that can be used indoors that is often forgot about but can give great results, natural daylight, but we can't use that in here so we need to move. Window light is good, especially on a dull day where you can have the light coming through the side of the window or through the skylight and you can further diffuse with fabric like tissue paper or neck curtain. Window light can have a really nice quality. A lot of professional photographers use it. You can also modify the light using a reflector, maybe white card, or you can use silver card or tin foil if you want a cooler light. A piece of gold card will give you warmer light. Let's experiment with these. So you can see it's possible to get good quality shots on a limited budget. 
These are just the basics and can be used with different subjects such as portraiture. Once you master these, there are so many other creative lighting techniques you can research and apply to your own work.